Hackers broke into the networks of the Treasury and Commerce Departments in the US as part of a months-long global cyber espionage campaign, just days after the prominent cyber security firm FireEye said it had been breached in an attack that industry experts said bore the hallmarks of Russian tradecraft. In response to what may be a large-scale penetration of US government agencies, the Department of Homeland Security's cybersecurity arm issued an emergency directive calling on all federal civilian agencies to scour their networks for compromises. Blake Christian from Holthouse, Carlin and Van Trite, great to see you once again. Great to see you, Mike. Large businesses spend large sums to protect their systems. What cost for a medium-sized business to acquire a reasonable degree of protection against a breach of the data? Is it expensive or can you do it on the cheap? You know, a, a lot of it's education of your, your workforce um, so that they don't, you know, the most common still is, is phishing and uh, email breaches are, you know, 94% of, of the, the break-ins. And so uh, it's educating your employees to watch for these um, techniques. And uh, it's, you know, it's not too hard. They, they, they ride the wave of, you know, uh, the current events and, you know, the, like over here with the, the PPP loans, they might say, you know, here, click here for your PPP loan status, uh, sending that to a business. And it's like, oh, yeah, I applied for a PPP loan. They, they, you know, try and deal with, um, you know, get you hooked by um, whatever the current events are. So you got to be very, very careful. But uh, it, it generally, the budget for cybersecurity is usually about, ranges from about 0.2 to 0.9 uh, percent of, of gross revenues. Um, a a well-run company will, will have, and this is an amazing figure, Thirteen hundred to nineteen hundred dollars per employee oh. um, to full-time equivalent employee in order to um, apply towards your the cybersecurity effort. You know, and, and I mean that's just just totally inefficient dollars. You know, if you know if we didn't have this problem, that would would have gone into profits. So it's uh, it's a frustrating situation out there for sure and it's doubling every year. Small business is very vulnerable to cyber theft. Do we know what type or size of business is most at risk? You know, the, it, it, it still occurs more, you know, they, they go after the larger businesses right now um, because there's, there's more at stake. They, you know, they do the ransomware routine where they'll lock up your data you can't access it, and the, the cost of reconstructing that or, you know, uh, restructuring it because you have it up in the cloud can be real costly. So a lot of people will write the check. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's <laughs> the, these things are prevalent, but they go after the bigger businesses because they can write the bigger checks. Uh, they, they still go for the smaller businesses, uh, depending on, you know, what information they can get to. Uh, they might even be able to embezzle money if they're, if they're very sophisticated. What sort of information are thieves targeting in these businesses? You know, I mean, it's the, you know, we've seen the very high profile situations where they've gone after the credit reporting bureaus and, you know, then they can go in there and get social security numbers, addresses, historical information on individuals. And from there, they can go and create a, a phony profile and, and, you know, they can generate um, credit card applications, have those delivered somewhere else, or sometimes they'll have them delivered to your house, and then they'll go and and steal it out of your, uh, your post box. So, um, there, there's all sorts of techniques that they, they use, um, and it's they're getting more and more sophisticated, for sure. What are the most important things a small business can do to protect the data? Well, you know, we've we switched several years ago to um, a dual authentication uh, technique, so that uh, you know you you'll you'll log into something, 
and then it will send a, a confirmation to your cell phone and then you'll have to acknowledge that. So, you know, unless, unless some hacker has your cell phone also, they're not going to get to that next step. I, I have to admit it's, it's, you know, it's annoying, it's cumbersome. Um, sometimes they don't come through, uh, right or, or I miss them and, and then I'm still not logged on. But I, I will tell you, you know, having seen uh, breaches at various companies, it's so disruptive. Uh, and I've also, you know, had had clients that have got hit with the ransomware and it just completely shuts them down for two or three days. Um, and then they, you know, often the, the FBI will tell them just just pay it because it's uh, it's a low cost relative to, um, you know, what what could happen. But you know, still that that hacker has accessed your data, so you still have some some additional issues. I recall when computers first came out, how it's going to save the world. Um, zzz, didn't really work that way. Uh, what are some examples of tax related identity theft? Yeah, I mean, the most the most common um, is is that they'll go in, they'll, they'll take a, a high profile person or just anybody with some vis level of visibility, they'll, you know, somebody that makes a lot of money, they, you know, that the public could tell, and they'll, they'll know that they've made a lot of estimated tax payments, et cetera, and they'll front run the filing of your return. So they'll, you know, I mean, that our average taxpayer doesn't file a return till, you know, June, probably at the earliest, just because they have a lot of complexities. So a sophisticated hacker could, could find their social security number, their home address, et cetera, file a return um, in January, uh, and they, 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 you know, they don't even know, need to know how much estimated taxes you paid. They file something with very low taxable income. The IRS will calculate, you know, okay, there's the tax, and they already have the data in their full file as to how much you paid in estimated taxes or W-2 withholdings. And voila, that, uh, that hacker now gets a, a refund check sent uh, some, sometimes again to the mailbox of uh, the person they're ripping off, or in other cases, they'll divert it to a new address, which is a little harder for them to do. And, and then that, that taxpayer will not know uh, until they go to file their return, that um, that this person has done that, uh, mm -hmm. they'll try an e-file and they'll say, oh, you know, the, somebody else already filed the return that, uh, under your social security number. As soon as that happens, you know you're in a world of hurt. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's been you know situations where, and I, I I was I racking my brain. It wasn't a client, but it was a high-profile person I was talking to. And they had a million dollar refund coming, and somebody somebody did this, and um, you know it was uh, took a long time to unravel. Can you tell us what action the IRS, being ever so loving, is taking to help small businesses? Well, it and again um, the the cure creates a lot of um, uh, extra work for you know, the clients as well as us as, uh, as tax advisors. So I have two, you know, two clients right now that have quarter of a million dollar refunds that are hung up because the IRS is insisting that they prove who they are and uh, before they'll mail out the check. And so they, there's a process where you have to get a, a PIN number from them and then enter it in and then add some other information. And so uh, one, of, one of my clients, uh, he, you know, we, we've done this three times and he, he just never gets the letter, you know, because they, they mail it, they physically mail it. The IRS doesn't use very much uh, e email mm -hmm. uh, because they're, they're very concerned about uh, um, uh, getting viruses. So uh, they're, they're using a little bit more, but you know, up until recently, they, they virtually never used email. 
so, so it's this clunky process of waiting for something in the mail. The mail system seems to be, you know, breaking down every time I deal with them over the last two months to get anything or send out anything. Mm. Uh, so, so these guys are sitting there, you know, not getting quarter million dollars. Wow. And, uh, yeah. You think they, uh, the IRS would send it out via a messenger or a courier? I mean, it's probably the easiest way instead of giving it to uh, a, a, you know, the uh, USA Postal Service because it just may not get there like all good postal services around the world. It can just disappear. So the courier signed for is probably the way to go. You know, that... It's and and then they're gonna then they're gonna hold they're gonna play the uh, COVID card. You know, no, we can't send any human beings out to you. But mm. uh, I agree. With, you know, even if you if we paid for our own courier, you know, if it's a quarter of a million dollar refund, let's uh, let's get that refund going. I don't care how much it costs. You wonder how uh, how enthusiastic that would be if it was the other way around. They're after a a, um, a, a lump of money from you. They would uh, be very, very enthusiastic in uh, making sure that that got to them promptly, wouldn't they? Yeah, I, ju I just wish we could impose the, the same penalties, penalties that they apply on us, right? Uh, it looks like Joe Biden will be uh, president. Um, uh, so makes next year very interesting when it comes to taxation and business. Uh, I'm sure the IRS will be um, really ramping up its services. Uh, because Joe will need to uh, collect a lot more back from companies and uh, individuals. Yeah, well, well, yep, and he'll, he's already got his plan out there to increase taxes, so uh, that'll, that'll be part of it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if he increases uh, the, the incidence of audits. Uh, the audit rate has, has been falling steadily the last uh, decade. Um, so I would I wouldn't be surprised that that's you know that would be part of his plan to increase compliance and uh, collect more money that way also and further costs to uh, to the business too because you've got to make sure that your books are up to up to speed and uh, that you have a, a very good CPA there to to ensure that they don't take you away to spend some time at um, at Rikers or somewhere like that. <laughs> right, exactly. Look, if somebody wants to find out more about um, what you do and uh, want to talk to you about the uh, long, dark four years coming up under Joe, um, or just talk about tax, good things about tax, uh, how do they do that, Blake? Uh, you can reach me uh, at www.hcvt.com or uh, simply put uh, Blake Christian. Uh, CPA in your Google browser and I'll come up that way also. Unless your identity has been stolen and then <laughs> they might get somebody else. You never know. <laughs> That's right. Blake Christian, thank you very much. Great to see you.